this is Posa, and Posa has a problem with some sounds. And so in this video, we're going to go over how you can use counter conditioning to help the dog stop reacting to a stimulus. In this case, the stimulus is the coffee grinder. Now what I'm doing uh, to begin with is I want to get her used to, the, to doing this. So um, I am putting, uh, having a, a soft, I have the cheeky, uh, Tricky Trainer chicken liver flavor treats. They're squishable. And I'm letting her chew on them. Now you can see with counter condition, with these, I can actually can direct which direction she looks up or down just by moving the treat. And I'm holding it and I'm smashing it so that she's eating it in about two or three bites. Let's come over here, sweetheart. You can come and get a freebie. Now my test, uh, my, the two controls that I use for this are I put the dog into a sit and I have the treat. If the dog stops taking the treat or gets up out of the sit, it means the stimulus is too intensive. And what we're doing this is we're gonna expose her to the stimulus while something pleasant is going on. Uh, i.e. counter conditioning. So I'm doing this just for a couple treats. I want her to get used to the chewing on the treats in little pieces without, I'm sorry, uh, without anything going on. And you see we had a little bit of it going on and so she's focused there. So dog's nose controls 60% of their brain. So if you blow over a meat treat, you can actually get them to, to look at it. Now, um, so wait for a number this time. Uh, sorry, he, it's a little bit far away. Now when you're doing this, you want to have the stimulus so far away that the dog does not feel threatened. If the dog gets up out of a sit or stops eating the treat, that's their way of saying it's too intense. So we want to either lower the volume, increase the distance, or lower the speed. In this case, because we don't have a lot of extra room, we have a muffler, we have a towel around it. So every time I say a number, the guardian is going to actually run it for like two seconds. Now during counter conditioning, I want to have uh, the, uh, and I, I screwed up because he's doing it, he's doing it very literally, he's doing a great job. So hold on until I say we're started, my, this is my bad. I, so every time I said a number, he was doing it. But the idea is we want to be delivering the stimulus first while the dog is chewing on the treat and getting the reward, or chew on, the, uh, deliver the reward first. While the dog is delivering this, then we're going to activate the stimulus while the dog is chewing on this. And then I will cough at any point she stops looking and he can actually see. So if he sees her turn away, he's gonna stop immediately. We had a code of coughing, but he can see. So the idea is we wanna start this off when it's so far away the dog does not perceive it to be a threat and we're gonna gradually help them become desensitized to whatever it is. All right, let's come over here. You need to come on this side of me. There we go. All right, so now we're ready to do this sit. So I'm gonna squish the treat and say that when I was 10, there we go. So the idea is we want that we want to uh, when the when the reward is happening, then the stimulus occurs, and then when the reward is about to go, the stimulus ends. So we don't hear the stimulus unless the treat is being delivered. All right, we're getting ready to go over for round two. And normally she would be barking or lunging or running over there when she hears the sound. Is that right? Okay. So now we're going to take away the muffler because we're, we're already gone a couple steps and she didn't even look at it. So now this is going to be more intense. We might get a different reaction. Uh, like number three. That was very good. All right, let's go ahead and do number four. Is that battery powered or is it plugged in? It's plugged in. How far does the cord go? Uh, I think it will let's take it a little bit, uh, like one step closer. Eventually we might move into the actual room. Yeah. All right, number five. So you see we have really no reaction from her. And the idea when you're doing this, you want it to be boring. So don't move too far too fast. That's a mistake most people make. Let's do one, uh, let's do one more. And uh, number six. Okay. Let's go and unplug it and bring it into the living, into the dining room and plug it in the wall outlet right there on this side. And now we're going to be in the same room. So we'll see how she does. And she knows the sight of this thing. So now she's seen it. So now she's already starting to be a little bit... Uh, uncomfortable about it. And in between these, every once in a while, I'll do one of these without the stimulus, so it doesn't always represent exactly. And move a little bit further back. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Number seven. I should have done it before, because this is, I think, one of these. So let's take another two steps closer. Okay. And number eight. Pupils are not dilating at all, which is a really good sign. All right, um, is there a plug a little bit closer? Let's actually, yeah, let's see this one. The guardians here really like shredding paper. Uh, I'm just kidding. They have a paper shredder in the living room, right? Um, so we're going to plug it in here. Now, this is going to be really close. I'm going to have you hold it through that little entryway and step into the other room. Okay. There you go. 
And the fact that she's actually LAY, I would put it through the gap so you can be a little bit further away. There you go. Let's get you a better camera presence. I am auditioning for a TV show and I need to have the dog look good on TV. All right, let's go to her number nine. A lot closer. Okay, so now we're gonna, let's go ahead and just walk so you're parallel with that. There you go. And uh, number, are you ready? Over here. Sure. Yeah. Number 10. Okay, and let's take another step closer. And this is actually good because she's lying down, she's putting it behind her. That kind of puts, this is a very trusting position. Number 11. So the idea for this is we can do this for anything your dog is reacted to. I had a dog named uh, Munchie that actually lived in Westwood that actually uh, Velcro, the sound of Velcro, made her the dog go crazy. And by doing this, now they can do Velcro left and right. Let's put it on the floor as close as it'll get. Right there, work, okay. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, number 13. Now, the, the, by putting on the floor, we have the added stimulus of the vibration of the machine. And so, but you see, she didn't even react. Go ahead and turn it on now. So if you use counter condition properly, you can help the dog get over a fear of the vacuum cleaner or whatever it is. Now, the vacuum cleaner, I should mention, is a problem for dogs not because of the sound, because of the smell. Everything is a smell to dogs. When you turn on your vacuum cleaner, the whole room erupts in all the smells from your whole house, and it kind of makes them nose blind. Plus, they don't like the sound or the vibration or the movement. So uh, I do the same sort of thing for dogs who are afraid of fireworks. First thing I do is get them used to the sound of the firework by doing the same sort of thing and gradually training the volume of a recording of a firework. Next thing I might do is have the dog looking outside a window at a firework sparkler thing that's throwing up sparks, and but it can't see it or can't smell it. And, and we gradually collapse the distance until the dog can be outside seeing it. Next thing I would do is maybe this sulfur smell. So we have like a smoke bomb at the end of the street and it's, we're downwind of it or upwind. So the dog, whichever direction that is, the, wind, the smoke is coming towards us. But if you do this properly, you help the dog get over this fear permanently. And then they realize, they start to associate when the car, coffee maker is on, I'm getting the best treats I've ever had. You have your mocha chino, I'm gonna have my chicken liver, right? So this is how you can use uh, counter conditioning to stop a dog from reacting to various sounds.